Hey everyone, Ink here. <laughs> back from a long hiatus on YouTube. Uh, I wanted my first video back to be a bang. So we in the troupe have been doing a lot of work researching Lufenia difficulty. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, Lufenia is a, a new level 200 difficulty that's coming to global uh, in just a month. Uh, end of October, uh, it should get uh, announced at the, not the stream on Monday, but actually the next stream at the end of October. And uh, similar to Early Chaos, we really wanted to try to help the community, ease them into the difficulty, let them understand it, provide a really useful resource for people. And uh, we made a whole page about it. So uh, before I get into it, holy crap, did you see that info <laughs> introduction video? <laughs> uh, the video, was designed by Dreamy. He is the the designer for our Tonberry Troop. And uh, I love it so much, integrating my favorite FF6 characters. It's awesome. Uh, he, for some reason, doesn't think he's talented. Uh, so if if you wouldn't mind, leave a comment about how his his art art matches Realms EX+, if you, uh, <laughs> if you think that it's great, uh, like I do. On top of it, Jeff plays guitar, uh, who uh, his YouTube is in, will be in the description also. He does some awesome arrangements of Final Fantasy music, and he offered to do a special one just for me for the Figaro Brothers theme song, and it, it came out so great. Uh, Dreamy layered it on top. Check out Jeff's channel. I honestly, it's in my playlist for just general listening. I love so many of the arrangements he's done. So thank you both so much. You're, you're too kind. Uh, it's great. So, uh, yeah, let's start to talk about Lufenia a little bit. First, I want to just open, we have a disclaimer on the website. You can find this page under the resources hub. Uh, we have so many, a lot of people don't never click resources hub. They think we just do infographics, uh, but the research is posted there. Uh, and we have a disclaimer because what we're doing is a lot different than what we did for early chaos. We're listing, uh, key, characters, examples of key characters. These are these are people that help you to counter the new difficulty or help to counter the boss in a notable way. It's not a list of meta characters. In fact, if you think that this is meta and you only pull the characters that we have listed, you are gonna miss out on really strong characters uh, because the damage dealers and the supports that are very strong they are more like the the glue that holds your team together to work with the key character to help overcome the puzzle of the stage. So you won't see like Noctis all over the page. You won't see Arden. You won't see uh, Kurosame, these great characters. You're not going to see them plastered everywhere because they are very strong, but they don't always counter the, uh, the orb. The best example I can give is if a stage required debuff evasion, we would list Afmao as a key character. If the stage right after did not require debuff evasion, that doesn't mean that Afmao is not still a very strong, great character that you could use, right? So we are focusing specifically on how to solve the puzzle of the stage. So make sure you are still keeping a balanced roster. Damage dealers and supports are so important. So, uh, the next section is special thanks. I'm going to end there. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about what Lufenia is. We have a whole drop down of information. I'm not going to read this uh, out loud. You can check our site and, and for sure you should. Um, so really Lufenia introduces this pink orb that you see to the left. Uh, it's the Lufenia orb. It has a countdown associated with it. And basically uh, it appears at various points during the battle and it counts down every ally, every turn that you take, every action, so C65 included, free turns are included, the count is gonna go down. And on enemy turns, it goes down two. And when the countdown expires, well, something bad's gonna happen. You're either gonna get a nasty AOE HP attack that will kill you unless you have a specific way to counter it, or 
Uh, and that's only, uh, a, a lot of these AOE attacks, they may dispel your buffs, they may cleanse their own debuffs, and so some characters will work in cases, some others, some won't, but uh, you know, later on in Chaos, they'll just Odin Zantetsuken you. You don't respect the orb, the orb will go to zero and you just die. They will set your HP to zero, you're done. Um, so there are ways to manipulate the orb counter so that you get more time, so that if the orb has 10 turns on it, you have an opportunity to freeze the orb to add turns to it. And that's what we're talking about here with the puzzle of Lufenia, because it's no longer about countering the boss. You have to counter the orb as well. Uh, for beating these stages, you get 20 high armor tokens. I really like this because high armor tokens, uh, they let you buy new upgraded armors for your characters, which are, which are great. They provide really nice updates, but it's not like early chaos where early chaos, you beat the chaos, it would reward you with ingots for EX plus and you needed more EX plus to do more chaos. In this case, you know, if you uh, miss Lufenia's, you're missing some high armors, but you're not at the point where it's crippling your ability to do more Lufenia's, uh, which I think is a really nice structure. It's not pay to win. Uh, BTs are really nice, BT and summons when they're active, that phase, the countdown won't won't uh, decrease. So it gives you breathing room uh, to deal more damage, to set something up, uh, can be really helpful. But I've seen across all the research we've done, uh, for months and months, you do not need BTs. They will make things easier, uh, but they are not at all required. So you can see we've got a table of contents here, and uh, you can see we've got some items listed out. Uh, this was a lot of work for us uh, and a lot of work for our collaborators as well. And if anything is wrong, if there's an error, if we mess something up, if we're missing something that you think is really important, really notable, please reach out to us. The link that's there is my Reddit so that you can drop me a direct message. Please do, we'd love to update it, fix it for the entire community so that this can continue to be a useful resource for people. So. When we did early chaos research, you might remember we only went up to, I think, Agrius Lost Chapter. We did the first 10 and then we stopped. Well, this project is a little bit more ambitious. <laughs> um, we have finished research up to Firion's Burst, uh, which is months and months away. Uh, we still have boss notes uh, on it. You'll see the difference between some, most of these say character notes in progress, some of them, like Transcendence, we're still working on it, so all the notes are in progress. Um, but let me give you an idea of what we're talking about here. So uh, at every single uh, event, if there's something notable to point out, like some power creep or anything, we point it out. So this is the first one. So it's, it's marking to you that, hey, these orbs can be dodged. You can tank them. You do have to be careful about those buffs and debuffs, like if they cleanse or not, because it means that, you know, hey, Eldnarsh can probably cheese it as long as the boss doesn't dispel his buff on the orb. Uh, and similarly, Edge and Bosch can help as long as the boss doesn't dispel your buffs uh, because then, and it's guaranteed hit, they won't be able to, uh, to do anything. So we point out where they work uh, they won't necessarily work on every stage, but they do work on quite a number of these early Lufenia stages. So uh, let's let's go into the first one, right? Uh, we always indicate the wave. We indicate where it appears. This is very different from how you may have seen other Lufenia uh, descriptions. We have them chronologically listed so that it, you can see sort of what the next step is, right? In this case, it appears, the orb appears after recast. It's only got a five count, five five actions. Uh, but you can freeze, the, the bolded area at the bottom will tell you how to freeze or increase the orb. And that will help you to figure out who can help to counter, uh, counter that. So you can see low brave will freeze the orb count. It'll disappear after its next re recast, after the next boss recast, and then it'll appear again, so it cycles. You can see we've got key characters uh, listed, uh, but before we get to that, right, we really need to understand what the boss is doing. And so for every single event, we have boss notes. And look, this is not uh, holistic. This isn't listing every move. 
Uh, we have immunity information, resistances, all of this. We've uh, worked extensively with REM. REM's amazing. I'll, I'll go into more detail at the end of this. This is, The description is timestamped so you can jump around. Um, but uh, it's got REM's information. We've got boss notes here, which tell you the various waves and really important are like the auras that, that show up. So if you were to consider like Odin's uh, chaos, you needed to know two things. One, you had to launch Odin after the recast uh, and you needed to not get broken by the recast. And if you did those two things, Odin's chaos was uh, pretty, it, it was manageable, right? Uh, knowing those and so we point out the most notable boss mechanics that you have to be aware of to uh, to tackle this so under that once you have an idea of this you know the orb you know the boss having key characters is really helpful and you can see these are just examples so we've got warrior of light listed here as as key because he provides a shield which makes sure that when Shinryu attacks well, the shield can absorb the brave damage and then Shinryu won't get, won't get brave and the orb stays inactive, right? There's no reason that nine doesn't work here as well. Uh, you have to, it, you know, they cover very different roles, so you have to accommodate the team comp. Um, Afmao works really well here because of her brave damage reduction that she provides to the party, so Shinryu gains less brave. Uh, and when you look at the, the key characters that we have, uh, the bottom three are Noctis, Realm, Amidatalian. They're all turn manipulators. They all do various things with turns. And it's because the orb is really present around the, the cycle of, hey, the, uh, appearing in between recasts so that you can help to manipulate what's going on there and, and have them shave at various points, right? So uh, they, are, they are important. They help to counter, counter that orb. Um, and, you know, Laguna probably, you know, he's just EX+, plus. he doesn't necessarily get a lot of attention, but he's got such crippling debuffs, he's got great debuffs, uh, speed down, attack down, and he helps to uh, counter Shinryu in that way to help uh, protect your team. And you'll see debuffers get highlighted quite a bit on this page because they can definitely help you. Um, so, yeah, uh, this is great. The top friend support that you see. This is all combed from YouTube videos. Obviously, YouTube is just 1%, right, of what, what's happening, maybe less, than, probably less than 1% of all the runs that people are actually doing in the Japanese game. But we can definitely estimate who the ideal supports are, who, who are helpful supports. In this case, a Mid-Italian and Noctis are, are great. And this was actually requested by our patrons. Our patrons have had access to this page for over a month now. Uh, to get a lot of this information, actually structure a little bit of their polls. People had to adjust and say, oh, wow, I'm, I've got a gap in my roster. I need to fix this. Uh, and so, yeah, they, they did that. Um, you'll notice in the banner for every event, we list how many enemies there are. So eight has two white clacks, whereas Warrior of Light is just versus Shinryu. You can see there's two waves on this one, whereas there's only, there's only one wave here. And uh, you're, you're always gonna see the bold information, which is really helpful. In this case, we've got Warrior of Light, Bosch, Edge, and Eldnarsh all listed. And it's, uh, it's because they help to counter, uh, they can dodge the orb, right? This is Eight's event, he's big on, do on dodging. So this is, this is where Edge can completely bypass it. Eldnarsh can hold them at zero on their orb. Uh, and Bosch and Warrior of Light can actually tank the orb. So we try to note these special cases where, where possible. Um, these are definitely just examples and really you wanna pick one, maybe two, right? If you need one person to counter the orb and one person to counter the boss, uh, that, that's what you're looking at. You are not using this to compose a team. You don't need one of these six, right? Um, Kurosame I wanna talk about because well, Kurosame is a key character for his own event because you can see at the bottom that the orb uh, is triggered, is, is frozen on ice damage. And you have to deal, uh, you can see the HP thresholds that appear uh, when the orb appears, when it disappears and such. And uh, Kurosame is great for that. Realm also can, she's pretty versatile, right? She can deal with this one because it freezes the ice so you don't need consistent ice damage. 
and a lot of other ice characters work, but what I want to uh, definitely highlight is, look, hey, Palum's here. You know what? I only found one Palum run. I'm sure that more people used him, but let's say that you were chasing Edward, his banners coming up in October, uh, and you pulled Palum, and you did not have resources for Kurosame, you didn't want to pull Kurosame, you don't have Realm, you don't have any ice attackers except Palum, I want to make sure that we highlight who that key character is. Sort of the, the, the person, that, the ally that can be the difference in the fight for you. And uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely important. You're not going to see a lot of Kurosame throughout this and uh, throughout, you know, scrolling through these, uh, these items. You won't see a lot of Kurosame, but that didn't mean he didn't get used. Just remember my Aphmau example in the beginning is that the strong supports and strong damage dealers aren't always going to be highlighted if they don't counter the boss and they don't counter the orb. It just means they, they are just strong and they're sort of the connective glue for your team to make sure that they're hitting hard, to make sure that they themselves are hitting hard and uh, and helping. Uh, in this case, right, you can see Kuja, this is Kuja's event against Bahamut, where holy damage is only plus one count on the orb. And that means that, hey, every turn you take, it's gonna go down unless you enchant holy. And look, there are runs that don't have, uh, they use a Kuja friend and they don't have Kuja in the main party and they sort of have to make sure to, that, that last 50% HP, the orb doesn't disappear after 49%. You've got to take out the last half of Bahamut's health uh, in, in 20 count. If the count doesn't show up in the second appearance on our site, it means that it's the same count. And so that's you've got to make sure that you do a lot of manipulation if you aren't bringing consistent holy damage. So uh, you can see there's some pretty interesting key characters, Jack and Arden. <laughs> uh, the, the reason, and you can review in the boss notes, right? We, Bahamut has a, has a sap aura on the field. And so it means that every single turn that passes by, he will sap your, sap your brave and he will unbreak himself. And that means that characters that thrive on breaks can really go to town. And on top of it, Bahamut can't be delayed by getting broken. His turns are locked uh, and uh, so are his ads. And so the, <laughs> the funny thing is that Jack can, Jack's mechanic is that when he breaks an enemy, he jumps in front of them. Well, uh, <laughs> that means he can, this is a hilarious video. I had to link it. Thank you so much V Power for recording this. It's very entertaining. It's really cool, a really cool strat. Uh, that Jack can auto through auto through a lot of it. Uh, you have to take off auto every so often. It's it's really cool though. So we do try to point out these kinds of notable runs when we see them. Uh, edge doing edge things. Arciella with HP silence. It works on this one. Her HP attack disable. But a lot of information on on Kuja and then the strat if you want to use Realm. Whereas Realm isn't dealing constant holy damage, so you got to be a little careful if you were planning to use Realm and not pull Kuja. You you may need some uh, a different strat for that. Um, just going over some more things that you may see, like various waves where things happen. Uh, we'll break out the waves all the time. Uh, sometimes orbs will not have a way to counter them, to add to them or freeze them. Uh, a lot of times they won't disappear and you have to just tank them. This is Gladio's event. Um, there are maybe multiple different kinds of orbs. This is Lightning's event where there's an ad and the ad has a different uh, behavior for the orb uh, that you need to be mindful of. It only goes down on the, the ad's turn and not uh, the ad, I'm talking about the blade. Uh, whereas the, the actual boss has a totally different mechanic but you can see the the trigger here to increase the count is thunder damage, and uh, that's why Garnet, Raijin, Dash, they're all they're all highlighted uh, and and prominent. Right, this is Thunder Enchanter's time to shine uh, because they can do some great work here, and it doesn't mean they couldn't do work before. Right, it's just they would maybe be in more support capacity rather than a key character uh, capacity. You'll notice a Italian is <laughs> is all over the top friend supports. Uh, he's really common, but not always. Uh, and and I God, I said he. I mean they. Uh, or or more people say she, but it's they. Uh, 
Looking at Camelot, the trigger here is to deny a turn with paralysis, or in Edward's case, sleep, or in Eldnarsh's case, using terror. You have to deny the turn, and so a Meditalian deleting turns is not very good for this. Uh, it will it will cause the orb to go off, and you've got to deal with the orb from 80% HP all the way down. It never disappears, so you need to be able to deny turns. Uh, and we'll always point out, like we like I said, we try is in this case Edge uh, being able to uh, work here and really review review our boss notes. We've got lots of information in here uh, to help you understand what the uh, what the mechanic of the boss is. And uh, of course, the key the key characters and how they work. Um, so we're getting toward the end of the end of the walkthrough of the of the site. Reno's event is the first. It's let's say early chaos, early Lufenia ends at Reno. Reno's event is punishingly hard, uh, and it is significant power creep in terms of what what these are. This was. Hell Month in JP. I didn't play JP, so look, I, I can't comment on truly how difficult it was. I'm going off of all the information we collected, which is what I'm gonna go through after after I walk through all this. But edge strats, Bosch strats, they don't work anymore because uh, you have to be able to deal with the the boss and the orb. Um, in Reno's case, it's the boss that's, that's totally punishing because the orb, you can keep it frozen with three debuffs, so you see people like like Rude and, and Amid Italian that are debuffers, uh, and Edward has some debuff as well. So they, they certainly help here, um, but you have to be able to counter the boss, and it's extremely difficult. And you can see it resists uh, Arciella, Kefka, Eldnarsh debuffs, so you have to beat it honestly. Sephiroth is, Probably one of the hardest Lufenias that's ever been made. Uh, you see that there's no way to make the orb disappear. It is absolutely, completely a damage race. And so this is where you see characters like Kurosame, like Saz. They really shine here because they're keeping you hitting crits. They're increasing your HP damage. And we have so many notes, so many notes for these difficult events. They were more notable. Uh, and we go through, you know, a lot of the, in this case, we have a lot of alternatives that you could use. Like, hey, you don't have Lightning or Sephiroth, Arden, Noctis are good, Warrior of Light works here. Charlotta fills uh, a, a similar but different role as Kurosame, right? You've got a lot of potential supports. Even this being the most difficult, BT still wasn't required. <laughs> Shout out to the JP community for being amazing, right? They they are uh, really good. Kieran's the last in this gauntlet, um, and we've again got lots of lots of notes on this. But a lot of these enemies have auras uh, or mechanics which lower all their brave damage to one, and you have to break them. And so you know, for Kieran's case, you can see that uh, a lot of this is gravity characters. Characters that can nullify HP damage uh, or, or brave damage and can instantly break. That's why Trey all of a sudden appears. So definitely use our key characters as examples for what you uh, what you might want to uh, uh, use to tackle these. And then just note, even if we don't have key characters, right, and we're looking at Firion's uh, BT, We've still got boss notes uh, on these, and uh, I want to talk about how this whole process went. So I'm going to go back up to our special thanks because I feel like it's important to point out how we went about all this research and collection. This is quite a lot of work. Uh, and so first, absolutely have to shout out Rem and the Dissidia DB. So Rem, not just Dissidia DB, he created a whole new page for us. Uh, because we were asking about Lufenia and he's so busy and he still went and did this so that we could grab all this immunity information. We've never had this in GL. We, it's it's sort of like we only knew notable things like, oh yeah, you can't use a certain character here. They resist uh, a specific debuff like Yuffie. Uh, the enemies would often uh, resist max HP down. Well, you can actually see all of this on this page. I. It, this page is awesome. Rem did so much work. 
Uh, I can't believe, you know, we all, all of us content creators across the board, those people that give recommendations for you on, uh, on various characters, all of us rely 100% on REM, maybe 99% on REM. Without REM's work, we would be shadows of ourselves. Our content wouldn't be as good. I'm gonna put his Patreon in the description. Like, he's such a great person, so nice, and does so much to enable the community. Uh, Veridux did all the translations of the boss data that's on REM's page, uh, and continues to do translations for all the new Lufenias that come out in JP. And we wanted Vera's permission before we used their, their work uh, to translate all the Japanese to English. Shinri, uh, Shinri is awesome. Uh, she helps with a lot of our analyses for the infographics. But when I mentioned to her that we were looking at Lufania, she was like, oh, I can help. And then sends me, uh, you know, the next, over the next couple days or whatever, sends me notes on over 20 different Lufanias and says, hey, I hope this helps. And it's like, oh my gosh, what did you just do? This is amazing. And we used Shinri's work as the framework for everything that we were doing around boss notes and the orbs and everything. Uh, she, she helped so much with strategy. And to help color in all this data, to provide more clarity, more information, we took to some of the more, uh, some really useful YouTube pages that we found. One is Safina's page. A lot of people know Safina because of her spreadsheet, but her YouTube is excellent. She always publishes boss information in her description of her videos. She also publishes uh, notes on her strat, the, the various strats that she uses to counter the stage. And it, gosh, it works so perfectly with what we were trying to do here. When I found it, I just immediately started watching and liking all of her videos. Such a great channel. Um, and she was so nice to allow us to use her uh, her YouTube as a source for this project. Black Nero, a lot of a lot of people know him as Black Cloud on on Discord, but he has well one commentated JP runs, which very few people have. Uh, he does retrospectives at the end of the month for every single uh, every single month. He goes through every fight and talks about how the fight was received some of the strategies for it, how he tackled it, really helpful stuff to help add a lot more information. Um, he's on the path to 1,000 subscribers. If you haven't subbed him, I will just say that he is without a doubt my favorite YouTuber for DFFOO content. There is no one that is actually even close. He's the only person I have notifications set on for because he's both entertaining and informative. He provides really unique, interesting content. So. Check out his channel for sure. Last but not least is Anomander. Anomander has been, oh gosh, so hardworking, so amazing because uh, while Anno is just a GL player, uh, they've gone through and combed YouTube for all the videos that we have been using to help inform on key characters and the friend units and everything and providing more analysis on the fight to understand why those characters were used how the fights went, we're talking hundreds of videos that Anomander has combed through. Just th th such an incredible research uh, uh, contribution that, that they've provided and are continuing to provide, right? Because we still have a lot of ones here. Uh, they're, they're working on Ferian right now. I was just talking to them and they're, they're just, they keep going and it's awesome. Uh, Anomander is why this whole project is possible. I got burned out in early chaos from making all the that video repository that I did. And Anomander's been so stellar at, at working with us. Uh, great person. And look, they, Anno gave us permission to uh, share the visit video repository that they've made with our patrons. I don't wanna publish it publicly. We've got this page for the public. It provides so much great information. The repository just has YouTube information and you can find that on YouTube. It's a quality of life if you have direct links to various runs and it's all organized. So we're opening it up to our patrons uh, and uh, it, it's just a way that we try to do a little bit more for our patrons. They get early access to all of our documents, our research documents. So a lot of people have been asking, hey, where's the Renoa infographic? Why didn't you guys do Renoa infographic? Well, she doesn't, we knew when Arden came out that Renoa wasn't coming right away. And when we got the official calendar, yeah, 
Renoa is, is still in a few more days. And so our, our patrons have had access to all of our notes that we have that go into the infographic. So they've had that now for, well, our one tier of patrons gets it, uh, access to the full repository of all of our research documents. So do consider, you know, if you want to support us, that's great. We obviously uh, don't want to uh, pressure anybody into doing like extra, extra stuff like that, which is why there's no ads on our site. We make sure that all of this is open for people. Um, these people have totally been amazing. So uh, with that, I just want to say so much thanks for these people and everyone else that we've worked with that's helped, that's provided feedback on this project. The project is going to keep going. Definitely, for sure, please reach out to us. Uh, use the link on the page if there's anything you think we should add or fix. Uh, we're, we're more than happy to, uh, to discuss it. I hope that this video and all this research we're about to publish is providing a little bit of entertainment during this slow time in the game. Uh, I think that the slow time in the game is actually because I'm hoping, hoping this is totally just a theory, but I'm hoping that there's a quality of life that's coming with the raid and they wanted to wait for that. Um, they wanted to wait for the stream to announce the quality of life and that's why they delayed the raid. It's not really delayed, but it's uh, more separated from what we're, what we're used to. So, Anyway, if you've gotten through this with me, I thank you so much for, uh, for listening. I hope you found this helpful and interesting. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I really hope that this page helps you get a little bit more familiar with Lufenia and what your plans may be. Uh, and yeah, uh, take care. Thanks for watching and uh, good luck everyone. Stay well.